Welcome to Eureka. I am Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka, a program that brings one of the outstanding Indian scientists face to face with you. Let me begin with a story once again. 1947, East Bengal, there was a family, a very large family, where there were 16 children had to migrate. To West Bengal. There was extreme economic hardship. And in this family, everybody was educated. They valued education a lot. The 13th child had to take up a job. Education was completely disrupted. But he had resolve to continue his education while doing job. In Indian Railways, he became in charge of one of the railway stations. And this is where his new generation was born, a child. Parents took care that the child should get what they couldn't achieve. Child should get the best of the education in the country or even if he has to go abroad, he should go. The only problem was that this child always stood second in the class and could never be the first. And the family was always disturbed about it. The child himself was always disturbed about it. But he excelled. Welcome Dr. Bikram Jeet Basu to you, our show. It's our uh, fortunate uh, moment that such an outstanding scientist is with us today. Do you remember your school? Yeah, I remember quite... Uh, Where you studied initially sitting on the floor. Yeah, I mean that's very early stage in my life. Uh, I started going to uh, one railway school in a small town called Beldanga uh, mm -hmm. where my father was station master and I started my schooling by sitting on the Did floor. you feel like yourself like like um, um, the, the lord of the railway station? Uh, not exactly <laughs> because I was too little to realize that. Yeah. But uh, one thing I really remember that when I was allowed to sit on the benches, that day I came back home and told my mother that... Uh, In the school? In the school. Because the, earlier the, uh, in the class the you floor, were sitting actually. on the floor. And then when I was allowed to sit on the benches, and that day after the school is over, I came back home and I told my mother Very that, exciting. yes, now I can sit on the you know, bench and study. So that was the one memory actually I still had. And it was a very, very important moment for you in life That's right. as That's a right. child. That's right. Here, from a small town, you come to a bigger town to do your engineering. Though you wanted to do uh, medical and you wanted to be a doctor, somehow you couldn't cross that barrier. And uh, then you opted for engineering. One that you could opt for engineering, that is very good. You would have lost a first rate scientist had you been into medical probably. Uh, but was it very disappointing for you? No, but once I decided that I'll pursue engineering, I really started loving it. I remember that I was really not very sure that which particular discipline I should take. But then we had a very close family friend, Dr. Biman Ghosh. Uh, he was then lecturer at Sipur Bengal Engineering College. Mm. And he suggested me that I think that with your temperament and all other aspects, because he really knew me right from my childhood. So he suggested me to take metallurgical engineering and there I landed up in the field of metallurgy. You didn't know anything about metallurgical no. engineering no. at the moment. No. And where it'll, it's going to lead to you, that was not clear to I you. I only knew that it may have some relation with chemistry. But to be honest, I did not know anything more than that. Now that word metallurgical engineering is, is almost... Uh, extinct, it is called uh, material science these days. Uh, 
when did that switch over in your life happen when you started expanding your horizon the kind of work that you have done is basically integration of a lot of other things and instead of going to kanpur iit you chose iic bangalore was that the turning point which which opened up your horizon for yes, your masters yes uh, yeah yes indeed it was true uh, when i stood 11th in graduate aptitude test of engineering you could uh, have chosen anywhere i could have world. chosen the iit kharagpur yeah. next to my home yeah. but i chose in any sub science because i heard a lot about that institute and i think that my that was your decision nobody advised you my decision and also it was strongly supported my father and then i came to indian sub science and i was amazed with the scientific environment and ecosystem of the institute and i may be quite honest that if i would not have come to indian sub science i may not have pursued research as my career as my dream but after uh, coming back to india after post doc uh you chose uh, iit kanpur rather than iit bangalore <laughs> right um that time actually you know that i spent quite a few years abroad and being the only son there is always pressure to home coming whenever i used to come back from abroad to my home my father used to always remind me that you have to come back to india and serve the country so then first and serve the country serve the country not because he was living in india no first to serve the country that was the value system the, that you inherited from your parents and your older generations so when you came back to india to serve the country why did you decide to join iit kanpur why not iic uh, where you are at the moment right uh, to be honest actually at that point of time i never applied for faculty position at indian sub science so i just uh, applied to iit kanpur and then kanpur gave me the first offer then i asked my father that shall i wait in U- in us to do some more years of post doc before coming back to india he said no you got the offer first offer you must you accept it come back and i did it and then you created one of the most excellent best uh, laboratories there uh, but when did you decide to switch over to bio sciences that is very, very very weird in fact somebody do excelling in ceramics suddenly switches over to to biosciences i think i decided uh, fairly quite early in iit kanpur at the, around the age 2005 2006 i initially i continue to do uh, engineering ceramics the field where i pursued my doctorate at catholic right. university leuven in belgium under the supervision of professor omar van der beest but then slowly i mean i developed the research program on engineering ceramics which is also not a very matured field of research at iit kanpur i had to really establish the whole set of laboratory struggle hard struggle hard and then subsequently i said that okay that if i have to make a real impact to the society i have to do something which would some way would influence that human health care and then bio, biological ceramics biologically compatible ceramics or bio ceramics have started penetrating that academic uh, but this facility. confluence of physics chemistry biology zoology and ceramics this is a wonderful thing why did you think that it was very important to develop a thing like what you have brought yeah for example uh, i'll just give one example for that uh, materials for orthopedic applications so in the total hip replacement uh, we have this stem then we have the femoral ball head and the femoral ball head goes, goes into inside the, the acetabular socket so this is one of the material which was developed by our research group this is called polymer ceramic hybrid composites right i did not know anything about polymer when i was doing my phd but i learned everything while at kanpur which was chemistry pure chemistry pure chemistry and then i started doing research on that and i have done up to in vivo test in rabbit animal study mm-hmm. fortunately i had established quite close relationship with sujita thunal institute of medical science and technology in trivandrum and i had quite a good colleague there and they helped me in 
doing all this animal testing in rabbit and we found the material biocompatible and now we are now some Indian industry. Why is it important to develop that kind of material? It is important to develop this kind of material because it is much better in terms of friction. Why can't you use anything else? Let yeah, me put it in that terms way. of friction and wire resistance compared to the existing material like ultramolecular polyethylene in terms of physical properties and our biocompatibility properties is also not compromised which is quite important. And you will be really happy to know that this technology is currently being transferred to or we are really talking to one of the Indian companies. So a large number of people who develop joint problem would be benefited by this very, very high uh, cutting edge technology and cutting edge science. Uh, why do you think that you had to relate what you were doing as far as the joint is concerned to something uh, which is which is uh, space technology. You have been working on that as well. Yeah, uh, very early on at IIT. How do you relate these two things? I it's mind boggling. Yeah, that somebody working on on bones of human beings is also working on uh, something that is that will be part of the nozzle of a rocket. Yeah, actually that was the extension of my. Um, my PhD research that when I developed strong interest on non-oxide ceramics and then during the early stage of my research at IIT Kanpur before I even entered into the biomaterials field, I thought that it would be much more relevant uh, if I could develop some new materials and that was basically zirconium diboride based materials right. for re-entry space vehicles that and then we collaborated. We haven't ISO. developed re-entry vehicles as no. of yet. No. Yeah. But then without developing material for that we can never develop re-entry right. vehicles. But the same research you have also used for uh, nuclear technology. Yeah, nuclear technology, that's so right. It's amazing that you begin with ceramics and then you go over to bones of, of human beings and then you enter into space research and then you enter into nuclear research. How do you relate? What, what, what was that? Actually, the common thread that binds all these three areas is my fundamental understanding to develop ceramic materials. And I exploited my basic understanding on ceramics and applied that basic understanding of ceramics to some of the strategic areas. And I had one good student who is currently now a scientist at Baba Atomic Research Center. When he studied masters with me, then I developed titanium diboride based materials which can perhaps be used in countries high temperature nuclear reactor in near future. This is amazing how sciences come together to create amazing things. Don't go anywhere, I have to take a break, we will come back soon. Welcome back. Dr. Basu, we were discussing the kind of materials that you have developed and the kind of application they have and very, very varied. To a layman like me, it will be almost unrelated kind of thing uh, which, which uh, develops such varied material. How do you see material sciences future in the country? We are investing hell of a lot of money. This is public money. That's right. Do we need to spend so much? I think so, but I think we need to be accountable that to see that how this financial support to scientists finally helps India to prosper in some of the strategic sectors like nuclear, space, and more importantly in the healthcare because India is such a country over 1 billion. I think if we can solve some of the challenging, clinically relevant, challenging problems related to You have been working at the cell <coughs> level and especially in vitro levels. That's right. Uh, would you like to tell us something about that? Sure. Uh, typically, the biologists take uh, one of the common pathways that they use some of that biochemical growth factors 
to induce the differentiation uh, of human mesenchymal stem cells, for example. Right. I just given one example of stem cells because many common people actually they can relate to the stem cells. What our research group has shown. Many people, it will be very amazing that uh, a person who has started ceramics would be an expert in stem cells. Please go ahead. Yeah. I would not say I am not, I'm an expert in stem cells, but still, we use stem cells in our research. Then what we have shown that if you grow stem cells on electrically conductive biomaterial substrate and apply that external electric field in a very intelligent manner and in a regular and periodic manner, then you can essentially tell the stem cells to differentiate to neural cells. And, and, that, and that we have shown through in vitro experiments. There we have done a lot of PCR analysis, polymerase chain reaction analysis to understand the underlying reasons behind this differentiation. Ext extending that similar research, recently one of my PhDs... See, if, if we understand, suppose we understand that how does differentiation takes place, what is its use for the common man? Yeah, the common man is used that, you know, suppose if you make a neural implant, implantable uh, materials for neural tissue engineering applications, and if the scaffold is loaded with stem cells, and you have, if you apply the electric field in the same manner that almost we have done at the in vitro level, we expect that stem cells will differentiate to... Uh, so if there is cell. some deficiency then it That's can be right. overcome if there is a problem with the growth of uh, cells in somebody's body then probably we can uh, control it that's right and a lot of diseases can be controlled by mastering this technique you have been doing wonderful research and probably you have fulfilled your dream your father's dream your mother's dream to serve the country You've been handling many international projects. Do you feel that in your area now, we stand almost shoulder to shoulder with other countries? With respect to many of the developing nations, the answer is yes. But if, I, if we compare India with respect to United States or other Western countries, for example, Germany or France, in the area of biomaterials, I would still say that we have, far behind. we have still to walk a long way. long way. Why are we in that position? Is it because of the money? Is it because of the brain power that we have is not sufficient? Or is it because we lagged behind and we are trying to catch up? I I think that in, in India we are now kind of, we should not complain of the financial support because I think government has been very kind to support the research, much more so in last one decade. But, but last year was a bad year last for most, <laughs> most scientists, yes. Yeah, but what is still missing, for example, to encourage or nurture the area of biomaterials, we need to... Uh, to some extent follow that American model. For example, in American universities, they have hospitals. In many of the major universities where biomaterials is a large program, they have hospitals right within the campus of university. And that kind of system somehow, that kind of ecosystem somehow is not... To be built in the country. In the country. You have done personally wonderful work, created a, one of the best laboratories in the, in the world probably. Uh, and now you have shifted to IIC. Bangalore, uh, your contribution has been applauded, it has been recognized both by the scientific community and outside the scientific community. Uh, you got Young Scientist Award, you got the most uh, prized award in the country which is Bhatnagar Award at very young age, probably one of the youngest to get that award. Uh, which one did you value the most? Was it election at such young age to Science Academy? Was it Young Scientist Award? Was it maybe Watnagar Award? I think that two things that 
effect is quite satisfying. The first one is that um, Robert L. Cobol Award from mm -hmm. American Ceramics from Society. America, from abroad. And till to date that I am the only Indian from India to receive, to to receive that, that award. And I got, I received that award in Pittsburgh. And then second one, of course, as you said, that Shanti Bhatnagar Award. Actually, more than me, my father was extremely delighted. That you got Bhatnagar Award. One of the probably uh, biggest award in the country and for, a, for a scientist to get that. And uh, uh, it's like getting Nobel Prize. It's almost yes. like getting Nobel Prize. And that too, it's such a young age that you got that award. I'm sure it must have been very, very delightful for the family as well as a lot of friends. Another question that I've been asking repeatedly is, what was your moment of Eureka in life? Sky. When did you say that, yes, I have found something new. Yes, I have achieved something that had not been achieved by anybody or I wanted to achieve that. I think that uh, kind of work which was recognized by the Bhatnagar committee is that the electric field stimulation mm -hmm. of biological cells on implantable biomaterial substrate. I think when we started this work in way back in 2006 or 7 with one of my PhD student, we did a lot of theoretical study and then subsequently validated our theoretical study with experiments. I think that is one of the turning point in my career. Then I s thought that yes, I have perhaps I have started something new in my research career. Would you like to give uh, a message to the younger generation? I think to the younger generation now, I must say that you know, science and research, uh, I mean, really holds great promise in the country because. Now, there are so many avenues which can support uh, the research of young scientists, young assistant professors in this country, which are not there. Even when I started my career at IIT Kanpur in 2001, I think uh, only thing I must say that one should have fire in the belly. And if you have fire in the belly, you can achieve you can anything. Achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure you would be delighted to answer questions from the audience at any point of time. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any suggestion, feedback or queries, please write to us at eureka rstv at gmail.com and Dr. Basu would be happy to answer those questions. That's all for today. We'll come back with another outstanding scientist next, next week. Keep watching Eureka.